Hello and welcome to the Business of Luxury Conference 2015. We're in Monte Carlo where I'm joined by America Transu, who's a designer who's joined our panel today to talk about how technology was influencing manufacture. Um, and I think for you particularly it was very interesting because there was a tipping point in which you realised that the future had a sort of technological point in terms of your creativity. And I wondered if you could sort of talk us through a little bit about what that, what that genesis was. Um, I think it's, it's, it kind of started at the beginning, being a designer who works within the digital age, that um, you're building a signature and when you realize that you can use technology to define that signature so early on in your career, you, you um, can build on that brand awareness and establish the pillars within your company and that becomes um, an influencer from how you conceive a collection, how you use printing and imagery to define that collection, um, how you communicate that. Um, and you, you see a very quick growth um, in influence um, because of it. And can you so, tell us a little bit about exactly what that signature was? For me, it started with digital prints. Um, yeah. It was um, a thematic entity that changed every season. So we were in innovating within a technology that was new. Um, at that point, digital printing was taboo. People didn't wear print. It was very sterile. Um, so you had to find a very unique way of using it to um, make it be um, and sit within luxury and, and position your brand as such. Um, but it allowed you to unfold um, every part of your imagination um, that uh, provided a vision in the catwalk that then you could translate to a product that became quite democratic because um, as intricate as the collection was on the runway, working with um, artisans and embroidery and lace and whatever you could imagine, you could translate that into a print um, that became um, affordable within still um, the luxury what, sector. Did you, did you have to go to traditional manufacturers for this or was it a whole new kind of understanding language? You had to push language? the boundaries of every single so supplier. Who were you working because with? Um, we worked with um, local businesses within the UK initially um, to try to uh, move um, what was traditionally uh, available um, yeah. with digital printing, which starting out was silks and cottons and that was pretty much it. So it was very difficult to build on silhouettes that needed more structure and more form with that in mind. So you had to um, weave your own fabrics, coat them and then allow digital printing uh, to come. Um, to decorate that surface. But what you didn't realize at that stage is you were providing a tool for a different level of the industry yeah. um, that they could take on um, and they had the resources to utilize and effectively create a, a production process that was even more industrial, making it affordable to a mass level consumer which meant it was making your product less unique because you were educating the high street to pretty much take that and flaunt the market with digital printing. And that became a tipping point of, of changing the method of working and, and what your brand stands for and how it evolves. I mean, in a way, that's sort of the traditional pattern of the couture model initially, mm -hmm. that you'd go into the atelier, you'd experiment with new kind of techniques in lace making, whether it would be embroidery, mm -hmm. it would take it to the kind of like absolutely kind of highest degree of um, craftsmanship that you could and then it would proliferate down over the seasons. Mm -hmm. And that was always kind of the kind of accepted norm for how fashion worked. But I suppose with this, the new technologies mean that the same kind of creativity, but you're building new artisanal kind of workshops. You know, this, these are now going to be laboratories that are digital printing, that rather exactly. than- Exactly, and that stands more on the hands of an affordable luxury than it does in a luxury goods sector, um, that you're offering something that not everyone can own. Um, but you don't realize that. You don't realize that the innovation and technology that designers were pushing their suppliers is actually a better tool um, at a different level. And a new level of productivity. Yes, absolutely. So, so that uh, then feeds the of, industry. Yeah, it feeds a different sector of the industry, but then that, um, because it becomes so affordable and so attainable, um, makes it less special, less unique. So then you go back to working uh, with, with craftsmanship yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> and trying to push the boundaries of what they do with technology to allow you to push things forward and find new techniques and find new ways of innovation, but working with true craftsmen. Did you realize that you were innovating or were you just exploring an idea that you kind of wanted to? You very to... naively were yeah. exploring an idea <laughs> yeah, because like, you didn't know any better. Yeah. You pushed your suppliers, but then because they've had a long-standing history of breaking your ground, they 
they follow you in that journey. And I think um, independent designers have still that spark yeah. um, of innovation that they want to try things differently because they don't know any better. And I think when you lose that, a lot of the creativity gets lost. So we still push um, all our suppliers and develop true partnerships that we can each learn from each other, educate each other, and hopefully come up with a product or a technique or a development that's never been utilized in the same way. And I think so much of that is perception, how you perceive a product, yeah. what is new, what's not new, and what are those values that you want to maintain, and where are the points that you can still push. So technology mm. is very much um, being influenced by the new manufacturer, but at the end of the day, you've still got to have the brilliant idea. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Thank Mary. You. Thank you. <laughs>